Did you know that as designers, we can create property with our minds? Unfortunately, given the state of the housing market, I don't mean actual physical property, but what we create is intellectual property. And while IP might not be tangible, it is incredibly valuable. And it's really important that we understand our rights of ownership with the work that we create. So in this video, which has kind of been sponsored by the EU Intellectual Property Office or the EU IPO, I want to talk about IP, copyright, trademarks and licensing and give you the lowdown on what they are and when they apply to you and your design work. Let's start by defining the differences between these things. So intellectual property means original work created by the mind. It's an idea that you came up with and brought to life, whether that's an invention, an artistic or literary work, characters, symbols, images. For us as designers, it's the logos we create, it's the websites we design, or the illustrations we draw. These are all intellectual property because they're expressions of our ideas and our design thinking. Copyright is the law that protects our ownership rights of the intellectual property we create. And this is something that automatically exists whenever work is created. It doesn't need to be registered. So if you've ever been on someone's portfolio website and you've seen like a copyright 2021 in the footer, that's not something they've had to register for in order to be able to say it's copyrighted. It's like just a little note they've added to say, hey, this design of this site is my intellectual property and you're not allowed to copy it unless I say you can. <laughs> but honestly, even if it didn't say that, the copyright would still exist. Copyright laws vary between countries in terms of how long they apply for. Uh, in Europe, for example, copyright is valid throughout the life of the author or the creator of the work and then 70 years after their death. And after that time, the IP becomes part of the public domain and it can be used by anyone for anything and it's no longer protected by copyright. A trademark is something that is used to distinguish a company from others. It could be like a logo, a brand name, a color palette even in some cases, and you do register a trademark to essentially claim it so that no one else in your industry can use something similar to it that could end up confusing customers with other companies. And in the EU, you can do this through the EU IPO. Trademarks are usually registered for a certain product or service and they have to be distinctive as well, which means that a customer should be able to distinguish you from other companies in the marketplace through your brand name, through your unique logo design, whatever the thing is that you're registering as a trademark. And trademarks also can't be descriptive, so they can't describe what it is you sell, like wine, for example, for a wine company, because that's a term that needs to be available for everyone in that category to describe what it is they make. Last on our list of terms to define is licensing. So licensing is when you as the copyright owner of an original work or the owner of a trademark, allow someone else to use it under a defined set of terms. And this might be a Creative Commons license where you allow people to use it for free, but you're saying you still own the rights to it. Or it might be a usage license that someone pays for, like I have with my font Grayscale. I'm the owner of the intellectual property that is the font, I'm the owner of the copyright of it. But when someone purchases a copy of the font, they're getting a license to use it for their projects. So it's a way to allow people to use something you've created or a trademark you own without transferring the ownership officially to them. Speaking of ownership, now that we have those basic definitions out of the way, there are three core things that designers should be aware of to do with IP. When you are employed at a company, a lot of the time there will be a clause in your contract that states that during your work hours or using work devices, sometimes even just like for the duration of your employment in general, anything you create becomes the intellectual property of the company, not you. So as soon as it's created, it becomes property of the company. This is really common and it's not something to worry about necessarily, but it is something to make sure you're aware of in the contracts that you're signing for your work and to ask for exclusions of certain things as well. If you're someone like me who has a lot of side projects, you can ask for those to be excluded in the contract to say that you retain the ownership to them. And related to this, if you're a freelancer, you should make sure to clarify in contracts with your clients who will own the IP at the end of this? Do you retain the ownership and grant them a license to use it for a certain period of time? Or are you transferring the ownership to them? And you can often charge a lot more for the latter. Second, it is your responsibility as a designer to make sure that the work you do for a client is legal and not infringing on any copyright or trademarks. Of course, we take inspiration from others, right? In, in our designs, in our work, but we have to make sure that the work we create as a result of that inspiration gives a different overall impression rather than being 
a straight up copy. IP can be very subjective, but in general that giving a different impression is the important piece here. So like it's okay to use a layout idea that you saw on someone else's site for your design, but if you also use the same fonts and the same colors, then it starts to feel more like a copy. It is super important for us as designers to be aware of trademarks when we're working on branding in particular. We have to make sure that the logo we're designing won't accidentally infringe on a trademark of another business in our client's industry for the, with the service they provide. The EU IPO created this super useful trademark search tool where you can upload a logo design and see if there's anything similar to it already registered as a trademark. So you can check that out at tmdn.org slash tmview. It'll be linked in the description. Whenever you're working on a logo design project, you can just search for an image, your name, by industry and country to check if anything similar already exists. And lastly, you need to know your rights and the value of your IP, which I hope is something that this video is helping with. Whenever I talk about copyright, I have people asking me like, what do I do if someone is copying my work? And unfortunately, this is a really big issue in the creative community. And if this is happening to you, I would suggest first reaching out and letting the copier know that this isn't okay, that you actually own this intellectual property and that they aren't allowed to copy it. I would definitely recommend you try that first because if that doesn't work, you will need to turn to legal proceedings if you want them to stop. And like I said before, IP can be really subjective and it will come down to a decision in court. So anything that you have that could prove when you created the work that you were the one to create it will really help if you do want to pursue that route. And this is why registering trademarks for a brand is so important because it gives you an IP right title that you can then use to prove your ownership. It's pretty cool that we can create a valuable asset just with our minds and design thinking skills, right? I hope that learning about intellectual property has helped you to see the designs you create, not just as pixels on a page, but as a creation that really adds value to a business. It adds a lot of value. Huge thanks to the EU IPO for sponsoring this video. Please check them out at the links in the description for more information. They share loads of useful stuff about IP on their social platforms. So they are worth a follow, especially if this is an area that you wanna learn more about. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and share it with your design friends. It's really important that we're all aware of these things. And so it helps to spread the information, spread the knowledge. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.